July is National Minority Mental Health Awareness Month, and it's a time to highlight the challenges that racial and ethnic minority groups face in regards to mental health. Joining me now is Dr. Nicole Tarui, the Medical Director of the Maternal Outreach Mood Services Program known as MOMS at El Camino Health. Dr. Tarui, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me today. Can you first tell us about how many women in general are impacted by postpartum depression? We know that one in eight women will go on to develop postpartum depression in the perinatal period. Okay, so uh, one in eight, that seems to be a pretty large amount of the population. Now, when we talk about the minority population of moms, what are the statistics for that group? I think the statistics generally are the same across populations, but what we do know about minority populations is that we often see folks waiting until symptoms are quite severe until they engage in treatment. And why is that? I mean, why is there uh, such a difference? I think, you know, from my perspective, having worked with a lot of patients from different minority groups, I think the biggest issue that I see is stigma. And there's a lot of shame around experiencing mental health conditions. Um, for a lot of folks, they perceive it either as a personal deficit or something that they've done wrong. And they really fear just being able to talk about what's going on. And that's usually a big barrier for individuals becoming beginning treatment for the first time. And, you know, what are the signs that women should look for and when should they seek help? How do they know, okay, this is something different, this is something more serious, I really should seek the help of a professional? Yeah, I often have conversations with patients, even during pregnancy, about the differences between baby blues versus postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, and also postpartum psychosis. Generally speaking, um, baby blues is a very common thing that I think happens for a lot of women postpartum. Generally pretty mild, you know, tearfulness, um, you know, feeling easily overwhelmed. Um, that usually happens for the first few weeks postpartum. But past that point, um, when individuals are really having a hard time, sleeping is usually a, a very big first warning sign. Sleep becomes impaired, mood is much lower, the tearfulness persists, and generally just having difficulties functioning, that's usually a sign that more help is needed. Okay, so lack of sleep uh, or not being able to sleep, I guess, because most moms are not getting enough sleep, right? Um, anything else? I mean, are there any other really big warning signs? Yeah, I think a really big one that occurs, and it's actually quite common, are intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts are unwanted, disturbing images or thoughts of bad things happening to oneself, or typically what happens is it's thoughts about something dangerous happening to your baby. That's usually a big warning sign for postpartum anxiety, sometimes postpartum depression. Okay, that is really good to know. Uh, I know you have a program uh, at El Camino Health. Um, you play such a big role in this 12-week mom's program. Tell me a little bit about it, what you do, and how uh, the people you help benefit from it. And the MOMS program is a mother-baby-based partial hospitalization program and intensive outpatient program. Um, it really is designed to help treat the whole individual, understanding their own histories, um, symptoms, and also providing education about supports. Um, we have group therapy, individual therapy, and medication management. And there's a whole team of individuals supporting someone in their recovery process. So we have social workers, nurses, psychologists, myself, I'm a perinatal psychiatrist. And we really work as a team to help somebody recover from conditions in the perinatal period. That is so great that there is a program out there like this because I know there aren't uh, programs like that uh, everywhere, right? Uh, so you guys are doing something unique and helping so many women. Uh, overall, as we talk about Minority Mental Health Awareness Month, um, what's your hope with, again, awareness, right, uh, a, a, around mental health um, when it comes to uh, women, minorities? You know, you see it on a daily basis. Yeah, I think that one of my biggest hopes is to share with individuals just how common this experience is. I think for a lot of first-time parents, especially in minority communities, 
there is a lot of fear and stigma around maternal mental health conditions, even though we know it's so common. So I treat a lot of individuals um, from communities, and my hope is that as they're going through the treatment process and recovering, that they can also share their experiences to normalize what it means to receive treatment and support. Right. Uh, it's okay to get help, right? You want to be mentally healthy for the sake of yourself, but also your family, uh, because, you know, I'm sure you can weigh in on this. Uh, a healthy mom, a healthy parent um, benefits the whole family. Absolutely. The data shows us that when mom is cared for, when mom is doing well, this has significant impact on the benefits of health in general for not only her baby, but the entire family system. Uh, Dr. Tarui, thank you so much for joining us, for giving us uh, some great information today, and of course, for the work that you're doing to help so many people.